In this video, I'm going to talk about the racemization of the SN1 reaction. That sounds pretty awesome. Let's start by reviewing what SN1 represents. The S stands for substitution because we are substituting one functional group for another. The N stands for nucleophilic because in this mechanism we have some sort of nucleophile that is attacking a molecule. And the one stands for first order kinetics. Let's do a refresher. Uh, in Gen Chem, you learned about kinetics, zero order kinetics, first order kinetics, and second order kinetics. And you learned that the rate law for a first order reaction looked something like this, where the rate of the reaction was dependent on the concentration of just one particular substance in, in the reaction. So what does that mean in terms of the SN1 reaction? Let's actually write one out. If you've been following along with these videos, you know that I just keep using the same molecule over and over again for these reactions. So we have this carbon that has a bromine, uh, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. ET is the ethyl group. And we are attacking it with the hydroxide nucleophile, OH-. So if this is a, a first order SN1 reaction, then the nucleophile actually doesn't become important immediately. The very first thing that happens is that the leaving group on the molecule falls off of the molecule. And this creates a carbocation. This is an intermediate, meaning that the reaction kind of pauses at this point. So we have this carbocation and we have the bromide ion that has fallen off of the molecule. I'm just gonna kind of move this bromide ion out of the way. And so the reaction, like I said, the reaction just kind of pauses at this point. It doesn't stop on our energy diagram we're right about here, but we still have another step to go. So when we get to this particular point, then the reaction can continue. However, in the very first step of the reaction, the only thing that's happening is this particular molecule losing its leaving group. So this particular molecule is representing, represented by the A in this generic rate law, the entire rate of the reaction depends on how fast that bromide ion or whatever the leaving group is, is able of falling off. It's not, um, it's not uncommon for our students to get kind of tripped up or confused in remembering first order kinetics. So I have a trick to help you remember. Instead of thinking of this as first order kinetics, think of it as one molecule falls apart. In the SN1 reaction, the reaction starts by one molecule just falling apart, turning into a carbocation. Now let's move on to the, to the racemization part of it. Remember that racemic means, or it's a, it's a word that we use to describe a mixture of two enantiomers. 50% of the enantiomers are R and the other 50% are S. So racemization would mean that we are starting with a chiral molecule, either an R or an S, and we are turning that chiral molecule into a racemic mixture of 50% R and 50% S. How does that actually happen? So let's just kind of continue on with our mechanism here. Once the bromide ion is removed from the molecule, then our nucleophile is free to come in and I'm actually, I'm just going to try to move this bromide even more, like really get out of the way bromide. So the nucleophile is now free to come in and it can attack this positively charged carbon. And if you watched the SN2 video, I talked about how when the bromide is still there, it's creating like a negative area around the molecule and the nucleophile has to come from the other side so that we don't have those two negative things on the same side. But in the SN1 reaction, it's not how it works. There isn't a negative force field anywhere around this molecule. So the hydroxide ion as it comes in is free to attack that carbon 
from pretty much whichever which way it wants to attack. So I'm showing it attacking from the left side and also in another option, attacking from the right side. Let's draw the different products that we get when we attack from the left and when we attack from the right. So remember the carbon bonds that are not being affected by this reaction, they are not changing. We're not changing whether they're wedges or dashes and we're also not changing the position. When the hydroxide attacks from the right side, it will end up on the right side of the molecule. When the hydroxide attacks from the left side, it will end up on the left side of the molecule. And so these are the two different products that can be made from this reaction. Because there isn't a negative area around this molecule, the hydroxide ion is equally likely to come into that carbon from either side. So half of the time, 50% of the time, it's gonna come in from the right-hand side and give us this product right here. And the other half of the time, it's gonna come from the left-hand side and give us this product right here. It has no preference for attacking from the left or the right. So what does that mean in terms of stereochemistry? Well, let's assign stereochemistry to all three of these, our reactant which has one to two to three, one to two to three, this has R stereochemistry. And this product over here has one to two to three, one to two to three, this is also R stereochemistry. And then our last molecule, one, two, three, one to two to three, here is our S stereochemistry. So for, in summary, for SN1, if we are starting with a chiral carbon, we are going to get 50% of our product is the R stereochemistry and 50% of our product has the S stereochemistry. And that is all the time. 